Welcome back to the Live Pulse podcast, episode four. I'm your host, Anna C. Wuberg, Vice President, Marketing and Commercialization for Exebnus. I'm joined today by Serafima Schaefer, Well Digitalization Manager. Hey, thank you for being here, Serafima. I am glad to be back. In our last episode, we discussed how digital operational procedures are created and used during the planning stage of oil field operations. Today, we want to talk about how they benefit users during operations at the execution stage. That's right. Picking up from our last episode, I said that digital operational procedures are intended for humans and machines to read. And I would like to elaborate on that. As I said earlier, the procedures are planned and created to be followed. So digital operational procedures offer you several options. Part of the digital procedure would always be followed manually, like checklists. But we don't want a person always manually track activities. We are aiming to use automatic tracking, which means that the system tracks activities based on sensor data. And we can do it already now. And as the procedures are machine readable, these instructions can be fed directly into the rig control system and automatically executed. And that is precisely the trajectory we are following. We're moving from manual execution to eventually automation which is a major transformation for oilfield operations. Yes, and I don't want anyone to feel pressured about that right now, because today we're talking specifically about automatic tracking, and that is a big deal on its own. This is a capability that you can have right now. You can use digital operating procedures instead of simple checklists and use information that you already have along with the sensor data that is available on every rig today. Okay, let's get into it then, Serafima. What can you tell us about automatic tracking? What does the system track? It automatically tracks activities during operations and monitors them in relation to two types of parameters. The first one is operational controls. Let's assume that the engineer writing the procedure has entered operating parameters for a specific activity using a particular equipment. And the digital library is guiding the engineer's choices making use of the embedded connections as we discussed in episode one. So the procedures know what the safe operating envelope is for that tool or equipment. Exactly. And they know the safe operating envelope for the rig and for the integrity of the formation as well. By operating parameters, we mean things such as flow and pressure limitations. Yeah, correct. And remember, many factors can affect these limitations. Think of your car. It is capable of traveling at 200 km an hour. And the speed limit on your route is 90 km an hour. But you plan to go 60 km an hour because there is heavy rain and you know that your windshield wipers can clear the window quickly enough if you go faster. Automatic tracking lets you constantly monitor if the operation is proceeding within the safe operating window set out for the environment and the conditions. And if not? you'll get a warning. It will flag deviations and that will prompt the rig crew to make adjustments or to proceed and explain later why. The system doesn't step in and stop activities. No, no. And if you're getting close to any limitation, it will notify you. But it's up to the driller or someone on the crew to decide how to respond. Remember, there are usually other ramifications to a deviation. Maybe driving your car at 60 km an hour has some other effect that you have forgotten about. Maybe there is a high risk of hydroplaning in, the same, in these conditions, even at 60 km an hour. With digital procedures, you're not relying on anyone's memory or knowledge of these factors anymore. You will be reminded of all the risks in real time as they appear. So that's operational controls. What is the other type of parameters that is tracked? The second type of parameter is status controls. This has to do with tracking the progress of your operation against the plan. Are you performing the actions as planned? In the planned order? Within the planned time frame? Everything is tracked and recorded, so you get a precise account of what was actually done. Let's say the procedure says to pump at a flow rate of 2000 liters per minute for 10 minutes. But for whatever reason, the driller only pumps at 1000 liters per minute. The driller may have a really good reason. Or maybe he just got distracted. 
it's not necessarily wrong or unsafe, but you're not within the planned window of operations. So by definition, the quality of the execution is diminished. It has deviated from the plan. It could be just fine, but the deviation could also cause several things to go wrong. The good news is, you'll get a notification and you can react quickly. The driller can either justify the choice as a desired deviation, or can correct it and get back on track. You can see the effect of every action right away by the sensor response. Another benefit since we have a plan, the system will also know how long the pumping is supposed to take. Yes, and it will also tell you when it's time to move on. Whereas today, there is a fair bit of estimating going on and people trying to keep an eye on their watch. Yes, and every minute of lost time represents a lot of dollars. With our system, you will see the beginning and end of every activity timestamped, so you will know exactly where you've lost your time. Right, we know that plans are not usually matched up with the reports today. It's not so easy to do that with unstructured written procedures and text reports written after the fact. With a digital system, uh, you can zero on the deviations and know what actions to keep or avoid the next time, managing quality and efficiency of your operations. As we like to say, every project makes the next one better. Another advantage of the digital system is situational awareness. Everyone on the team sees the big picture during operations. Everyone is aware of each state transition and can track where the operation has progressed in the procedures. People on the rig or back in the office can go for lunch and know that in an hour the operation will reach some critical point that they want to be present for. Serafima, would you agree that the automatic tracking we offer is unique in the industry? Absolutely. Automatic tracking is something you cannot get with the generic procedure software that doesn't know how to interpret or use real-time data. And the only way to achieve automatic tracking is through the digitization of operational procedures. But there can be a confusion with other capabilities out there, for instance, rig state detection sometimes also called rig activity detection. This is not the same as automatic tracking. No, it is not. Rig state detection uses sensors to essentially deduce what activity the rig is doing. But there is no other information to tell you what comes next or where you are in, the pro in your process. It's like having a system that says, yes, I can confirm that you on a sieve are currently running, but that doesn't tell me very much. You could be exercising, or you could be running to catch a bus, or running to get away from a bear. The success criteria for each of these states is completely different. And the only way I can track the quality and success of your state, your running, is to have a procedural plan to measure against. It makes me think about the old-fashioned method of using a fold-out map when you traveled. You looked at what was around you and deduced where you were on the map. In contrast, today we have GPS apps like Google Maps. It knows your plan, tracks where you are on your route, and how much time and distance remains to your destination. It even gives you warning about what's ahead, like construction or traffic delays, and it tells you whenever you're deviating from plan. And it gives you an alternative route. That's very much like what we offer. Good analogy. Another thing is, if you only rely on rig state detection about where you are, it could be already too late to adjust your actions. The state is already happening, but like your Google map, our system will give you advice notifications to help you stay on your planned route. So, with digital operational procedures, you're prepared for what's coming and how to handle it. You have an early warning system that gives you time to make different choices about how you proceed with the operation. And it's also essential if we look further towards automation as the multiple systems are involved and they need to know in advance what's coming up. Digital twinning is another useful technology available in oil and gas, but it is also quite different from automatic tracking. Simply put, a digital twin is a simulator that is set up to run the same task as you are doing. It's been programmed to show how a defined action should be done, and then by using real-time data, it continuously recalculates as the operation proceeds. However, the digital twin is simulating the scenario seconds ahead of where you actually are. In my running analogy, it's like having another runner a few feet ahead of you, telling you, oops, there is a cliff here. Whoops, too little, too late. It is useful information for the next time you go running. Yeah, if there is a next time. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Digital twinning can be very helpful, and it certainly complements our system. However, it is always based on what you know, on existing models. It doesn't help you prepare for known future conditions or plan around potential events. Our system tells you what to expect on the road ahead. I'm going to know there's a cliff coming up and how to be ready for it. And if something completely unexpected happens, our system gives you the building blocks to construct a contingency plan on the fly. You can be proactive. It's not enough to be reactive as you necessarily are with the other technologies. Our planning capabilities become especially powerful if we use other predictive systems like machine learning. We're going to discuss that in much more detail in the next couple of episodes, and we'll take a look at RxEbna's current ML stuck pipe machine learning agents. Now, Serafima, you and I have had some heated discussions lately about what we see as the major shifts that are happening in industry as a result of digitalization. These are things that we see reflected in the topics we are presented today. Absolutely. One of these shifts is something we brought up in the earlier podcast, the emergence of data and transparency. Right. A digital system uses the data that each person inputs to move forward. In the past, you might have input some data just to keep a record for yourself. But now, what you input is available for the whole team to see. What you record and say is transparent and important. In relation to what we were discussing earlier, the system makes every deviation transparent. And it's up to the team to determine if it was the result of a decision in planning or in execution. And this transparency has all sorts of positive potential. By improving shared knowledge and the quality of data and by empowering individuals. Oh, and by the way, in future, with automation, it is extremely helpful, as we'll know that an error most likely was made in planning, because the execution will be exactly to the plan. Well, that brings up another high-level shift that we discussed, the emergence of planning. The importance of planning increases as you move closer towards automation. That's true. Currently, the drilling engineer in the office writes a procedure knowing that the driller will read it and bring their knowledge to bear. With a digital system, the drilling engineer writes a number, and that's the number the system will use to validate the operations. And if the driller on the rig decides he or she has a better idea, today the deviation might be recorded in a text document that never gets verified, so nobody really knows what happened. With the digital system, the sensor data tells the truth, and it's all there to be analyzed for further use. And that's exactly what we want, to remove the gap between planning and execution. Most problems comes back to the written description that is handed over to the rig crew and how it's interpreted. That's the weak point, where discrepancies creep in between plan and reality. Now, when the event occurs, we know what, why, and how. And that brings us to a third higher level shift that we see happening. Technology leading change. We keep seeing this all around us. Somebody introduces a technological innovation and suddenly people find many new applications for that capability. Change sparks all sorts of creativity. In our world, digitalization of the oil field is going to be just amazing as Airbnb and Uber. It is already providing huge benefits. And who knows what possibilities digital operational procedures will open up? Who knows what new waves of doing things will emerge? Serafima, before we close, it's important to recognize that everything we've talked about today regarding automatic tracking and automation, all of this challenges us to think about the effect on people in our industry. Yeah, correct. Roles and responsibilities are changing. There is no doubt about that. And frankly, it's not clear yet how organizations need to respond. It's a serious question, and we're going to dwell into that in future podcasts. But that's a wrap for today. Thank you for a fantastic discussion, Serafima. Thank you, Anasi. It's a pleasure to be here. As always, we welcome comments and questions from our listeners. Use the link on Exebna's website or on the YouTube channel and watch out for our next episode of Live Pulse. Thank you for joining us. Bye for now.